we described already is the tank capacity. This means that the next step is to go to your uh, system supplier and ask him about the tank dimensions and uh, then you have to go uh, to the plans of the vessels and check about access, how you are going to bring this equipment inside or outside, and uh, you should then draft an initial sketch of the general arrangement of the tanks. Then, again, with the help of your system supplier, you should be notified about the dimensions of the cold box and the layout of the cold box and the budget stations as well. Again, you should revise your general arrangement uh, plan and uh, then you should check accessibility, you should check the ingress in case of emergency, and you should check the fire resistant boundaries of the area under consideration. Then comes the difficult part. You need to at least draw in your mind and in a sketch the ventilation trunks, the routing, how to ventilate the spaces and how to bring the gas relief piping to the atmosphere. Finally, as already described, you need to keep in mind the routing from the bunker station to the tanks, uh, always in connection with the pre-cooling uh, procedures. Now, uh, a new aspect for you, for you to consider. SIMOPS. Uh, uh, if SIMOPS is to be an option, uh, then you should uh, take care of an exclusion zone. Let me first of all describe to you what is CMOPS. CMOPS stands for sim Simultaneously Operations. And uh, with this title, we describe uh, the case where the, the vessel is being bunkered, and at the same time, the vessel uh, loads and unloads the cargo, loads and unloads passengers, and uh, in principle, there is a circulation of people next or close by to this area. By exclusion zone, we mean the area around the bunker station which should be out of any such kind of operations. This means that uh, within a certain distance, let's say 50 meters, 25 meters left and 25 meters right, or 10 meters left and 10 meters right from the bunker station, no operation whatsoever should be uh, undertaken, like uh, no circulation of passengers, no traffic, no cargo movements, nothing. Uh, how you can calculate the exclusion zone? It's not an easy task. Uh, it's a case-by-case -case investigation. There is no certain rule. The minimum distance, the absolute minimum distance is 10 meters per side, 10 meters to the left and 10 meters to, to the right. However, the exclusion zone is one of the major subjects of the risk assessment uh, analysis that uh, class society will undertake based on your inputs. So, uh, if you are facing or if you are about to face CMOPS, then you should go immediately to the class uh, surveyor and ask for his uh, consultation and ask for his inputs on similar cases. Uh, another decision tool that will uh, greatly um, help you is the onboard inspection, a walkthrough inspection of the vessel. And uh, you should definitely arrange some kind of activity. Uh, let me tell you straightforward that if you are working only with plants, uh, you are in danger of doing half of the job. You need to go on board. You need to discuss with the crew. You need to present to the crew your basic ideas about installing the tanks and the bunker space, etc. And please listen to what they are going to tell you. Uh, you cannot imagine what kind of information you can uh, receive from them that you will never see written in any kind of uh, document. Uh, 
Uh, in, in this particular case of Estos Palas, I was fortunate enough because the chief engineer of the vessel uh, was a very cooperative guy and uh, he not only guided me uh, towards the spaces that I requested to go, but when I explained to him the case, uh, he kindly asked, asked me if he can propose uh, some ideas. And of course I said, yes, feel free to discuss with me any of your ideas. You are the one that later on you operate uh, the system. I will be sitting in my office, but you will sail on board this vessel with the LNG. So finally the end user is you. So he, the guy proposed to me some routings and some solutions that are of great interest. And I'm telling you that this will be implemented in the next step of the design. So please uh, speak with the crew and uh, do not isolate yourself from them. Uh, you should always perform a big stability analysis. We will speak on that in chapter six, immediately afterwards. Uh, of course, as described, you should discuss with the owner about the space loss and the capacity loss. And uh, you should go to the class with your preliminary answers to all these questions and uh, your preliminary inputs and uh, ask for a surveyor to sit with you, uh, display to him what's going on, display to him your ideas, and then uh, if you are fortunate, lucky enough, uh, the surveyor will guide you. And uh, allow me to say this because there are cases where class uh, is not making things easier, uh, they are making things uh, more difficult. But of course, unfortunately, those are exemptions. Uh, if you are having, if you are having your answer inside or outside, then of course this will be the basis for the detailed engineering analysis. Let's go now uh, to the pros and cons for its uh, position. If we are going in what inside or outside, and how we link with the bunker space. Uh, on board our vessel, uh, of course, both alternative positions are feasible and both can fulfill the design aspect. Uh, on top of that, from stability point of view, uh, our check, which was not a quick check, which it was a, an accurate, let's say, check, uh, did not unveil any stability issues, so both solutions uh, are stability uh, accepted from a stability point of view. The, the proposed position of the LNG tanks are the following. Here we can see the profile of the vessel. It's a, a shrink from the actual uh, as-built uh, section of the vessel. The first idea is to place two Type-C tanks here in the, uh, at the stern of the vessel by expanding this deck here up to the ramp and then installing tanks on the traversal, uh, towards the traversal uh, direction of the vessel. The other idea is to place the tanks inside, is to sacrifice the car deck number one, part of it, of course. We need also to sacrifice the car deck number two because the tanks are higher than the available, currently available high. We are accommodating the need of two meters uh, from the baseline and we also accommodating the need from the bow to keep the safe distance. In that case, we are going to make a cut here and connect number one deck with number two deck. Uh, later on, I will describe to you, uh, I will show you a cross section, and this is, for, the, for reasons of clarity, this is card deck number three, which is the main deck. Is actual, the actual uh, deck where the trucks uh, are circulating and uh, are parking. The engines in question that they are going to receive the retrofit is located here. Here we also have the other pair of engines, and here is the control room. So we are talking, based on the decision together with the non lines, we are talking about this engine room. Uh, from the first impression, you can tell that, okay, the distance from the inside position 
is uh, let's say this one and from my chart position it might be that one uh, here it's not impossible but it's more difficult to run the connection uh, piping from the tanks to the engines because we have to go through accommodation decks which are all these decks here it's not impossible but it's not easy as well so pros and cons for its uh, proposed position it's a clear uh, separation to the left we are reading the pros for its uh, placing the outside has an easy installation no loss of car space easy ventilation routes easy relief vent route and easy escape routing for inside we have a better protected area no aesthetic impact to the vessel it's closer to the main engine room it's closer to the blender station it's an easier pre-cooling and uh, an easier simops if this is the case uh, the cons for its case the outside we have an impact on aesthetic appearance of the vessel uh, the tanks will be exposed to the environment uh, there is a need for deck expansion we have longer piping runs this means pressure drop which has not been calculated yet and we are afraid that it will be out of the limits uh, we have difficult pre-cooling case we need to uh, design very carefully the pre-cooling uh, sequence uh, we have difficult simops because we are very close to the stem ramp and we cannot establish uh, uh, an exclusion zone quite easily and we have a complicated firefighting uh, application because we have open deck and we need to install special equipment for firefighting the cons for inside is we have a difficult installation we need to cut the side of the vessel to slide the tanks in we do have a loss of car space we do have a tank deck penetration we do have an equipment relocation by equipment we mean the fixed ramps that currently um, join the, the, the lower decks and this, these ramps must be relocated towards the bow in order to release the space we have difficult bend routes and we have difficult relief routes as well so we gathered all this information and we went back to Minoan we opened the full package on the table we sat with uh, technical managers we sat with uh, uh, chief engineers and uh, we agreed to go forth with the internal positioning uh, and the main three reasons for this decision is that we do have easier bunkering operations because the bunker station is just above the tanks I will show you later the place uh, in case of CMOPs on the daily express services there is no impact to the tanks there is no impact on aesthetics and this by surprise was a, a major uh, reason for Minoan uh, the managers of Minoan stated we do not want to uh, to disrupt the, the, the outside appearance of our, of our vessel we don't want our vessel to have two huge LNG tanks at the stem and uh, please do not underestimate this reason and every now every day uh, the solutions of the LNG tanks are taking into consideration this uh, this reason okay Viking Grace was a pioneer vessel it was something else but uh, from let's say from now on uh, the idea is to place the tanks inside in order not to disturb the overall picture of the vessel and the final reason was that the loss of passenger uh, car capacity uh, Minon stated that it, this can be compensated with the fuel economy due to the LNG use uh, so following uh, repeating capacity calculations and repeating dimensional exercises and placing on, on the drawings and uh, repeating this exercise again and again we concluded that three large LNG tanks are to be foreseen for internal installation and this is now the proposed uh, solution you can see as a section here is the LNG 
tank, the, uh, here is the code box, here is the bunker station. The actual bunker station will be shifted a little bit towards the bow. Here is the bow and here is the stern for your orientation. The fixed ramps yeah, that you see here have been relocated. Initially the fixed ramps are here and here. Now we have relocated in the drawing in newer positions. Here are the ventilation trunks uh, leading to the side of the vessel. And here, in this teeny tiny line, is the emergency relief ventilation of the tank and the cold box. Keep this in mind because this will be a subject of further discussion later on. So, summarizing what has been decided, we are going to use the lowest car deck, which is garage number one. Uh, we are going to cut the upper garage number two in order to accommodate the tanks because they are, their high is larger than the existing high of the, of the garage number one. Uh, we, are, we are going to relocate the fixed ramps. The connection with the bunker station is very easy. And so never, uh, the actual pre-cooling is uh, a very straightforward procedure. The escape route will be done through airlocks directly to the emergency escape garage routing, existing garage routing. Uh, the firing system is an easy task to upgrade. An AC encasement is foreseen for the tanks as an additional measure, although the code does not consider the, the tank room as a hazard area, we're going to encase the tanks uh, with A60 uh, barrier. Uh, the ventilation routing is relatively easy uh, through the main casing, which is nearby, and uh, then through side cell grills. There is no impact to accommodation spaces. However, the pressure relief routing is a show stopper at the moment. The difficult solution due to accommodation, funnel, and radar mast, and this is still open and now seems to be one of the most, if not the most critical design issue at this, uh, for this design. Now, let me show you some work, actual work that was done on board. This is the lower garage space, the garage number one. The actual photo is to the left, is this one. And uh, for orientation purposes, the photographer is looking at the bow of the vessel. And this is the result of the 3D scanning. We performed a 3D scanning on board this vessel in order to be sure about the layout and about the routings. So we went to a very specialized company, uh, Argonavis, uh, who, uh, who is, uh, the guys uh, provided the 3D scanner and they, uh, they did the actual scanning. Uh, we, it took us, let's say, almost three days to scan the areas in question. So here, what you see is the result of the 3D scanning, the so-called cloud, and this can be used uh, later on with the models of the tanks and the models of the cold boxes, and then we have the actual picture of what's going on, what's going on to be installed on board, and then the owner will visualize the installation as well, and he will know from the very beginning what will happen on the vessel. This is now a cross-section uh, that combines uh, uh, the three decks affected. You can see here the garage number one, the garage number two, and this is the main deck, the garage number three, where the trucks uh, are circulating and are parking. And uh, now the orientation is that the photographer is looking at the stern. The bow is behind him. Here is the Type C foundation. This is going to be where uh, this is the area where the Type C foundation will be placed. Here is the deck penetration due to type C tanks and due to height. This is the existing ramp position. Uh, if you remember, I told you that these ramps will be relocated towards the bow, so they will be shifted towards the photographer. This is the main garage uh, where the new bunker stations will be placed. And those are the new 
bank stations, let's say the limits, the new bank station, this is the Stadtboard bank station. Stadtboard because, again, please remember, we are looking towards the stern, not towards the bow. So this is the Stadtboard and this is the port. Okay, again, this is a very useful tool, the 3D scanning, and if you have uh, the capacity and if you have the possibility to perform such a 3D scanning, please use it. It will release your design. It will place you uh, in, in, a, in a positive, in a fortune position to conclude on your design sooner and with safer, in a safer manner. Uh, chapter 7 deals with stability analysis after the retrofit. Uh, not a very detailed uh, chapter uh, because uh, you can imagine that the stability analysis report uh, covers hundreds of pages. So I'm only briefly going to tell you what is this about. The scope of work here is to ensure that the vessels are comply after the LMG retrofit with all rules and the regulations that currently comply with regarding stability in impact and damage cases. This means that if the vessel comply with, let's say, 10 rules, I'm not just stating a number, uh, regarding stability, after the retrofit, it she should comply again with those 10 uh, rules. No more, no less. Stability analysis should be performed as soon as the position of the tanks is being selected. And if there is no detailed data available, then the designer should at least calculate uh, stability um, uh, impact, stability results by using generic stability algorithms that every student is learning uh, in the first year of uh, marine engineering. So it is most important, even by using the rule of thumbs, to have a generic picture of what's going on with the stability. Uh, as uh, already known now through the previous uh, slides, for Festos Palace, this is not the case. All data are available. Even the 3D model of the ship is available. The 3D model of the spaces are available through the scanning. So we never faced a case of difficulty. And uh, we executed the stability analysis by using um, the HCAT uh, program, it's a very special um, marine uh, uh, software uh, and uh, also we used the results from HCAT to as inputs to ANCO. ANCO is another uh, marine uh, program that is dealing with the load planning and uh, the, the program produces the final results regarding um, stability in cases of departure and arrival and uh, light shift, dry talking, all the cases anyhow. Uh, so the analysis is based on the requirements of rules and regulations that the vessel can be comply with, like SOLAS, the latest conditions, uh, Stockholm Agreement, SOLAS 90 for the damage stability, and of course all Greek flag requirements regarding stability and damage stability. So this is a, a, a case for you uh, a case-by-case -case, uh, study that every vessel should, should comply with all the rules and regulations that previously was complying with. I'm including now in this presentation just for uh, for you for you to see uh, some examples of the stability analysis. Uh, it's not in detail; you cannot see in detail, but at least you can get some uh, picture of of the work that was done and. Please remember, this is the preliminary uh, stability analysis. This is not the final or the full analysis. This is for departure, and this is for arrival. No big differences, but uh, uh, an exercised eye can see uh, some differences in the tanks and some differences in the in the curves of of, uh, of stability. So chapter eight. Chapter 8 is also a very interesting chapter. Uh, it is titled Finding the Best LNG Piping Routing, How to Crack the Labyrinth from LNG Tanks to Engines, and How to Ventilate. 
What is the scope of work here? Is to identify the best possible routing of LNG and LNG piping going from the LNG tanks. To minimize the impact on the existing vessels piping and cable routings, to create an effective ventilation system of the enclosed areas with, with LNG equipment, as finally is to establish an accepted by rules emergency gas relief pipe. Uh, summarizing this is that uh, if you go on the drawings, you must use the coordinated piping drawings of the vessel, you must use the coordinated ventilation drawings of the vessel, and then you must find the route of where and how how you will pass your new piping, which should be double wall piping for sure, how to pass it from the LNG tank to the gas valve unit and then from the gas valve unit to the engines themselves. This is going to be a really difficult case if you don't know the seat. So your first reaction is to open the drawings and at least get a picture of what's going on from the drawings. However, Please do not use schematics. Schematics drawings are of almost no value in this case. You must review the coordinated drawings where the actual heights, the actual positioning of penetrations are shown. Schematics are of no use. Then you should go on board. Again, you should go on board and you should ask from a crew member, uh, preferably the chief engineer, to go with you and to work with you on the selected uh, routing, if you have any. If you don't have any, then you should address the problem to him and state to him that, okay, I'm planning to install the, the tanks here, the engines are there. Can you please tell me a possible piping route? Uh, then for sure he will help you. For sure he will help you and uh, I can tell you this by experience because I went with the drawings on board the vessel and uh, I realized that the drawings uh, didn't show the actual case, the actual, let's say, situation in uh, some points. And this is normal because the vessel is a live, uh, is a live um, let's say, entity. Uh, changes are occurring uh, most frequently on board and uh, the revision of the drawings is far slower than the changing. In some cases, the drawings have never been revised. So use the drawings, of course, but use them with caution and then go on board and verify the routing. Okay, and again, if it's possible, use a 3D scanning. It will help you a lot. So, Christophe Palas, in our case, we did what we said previously. We had the drawings, we sat a couple of hours uh, uh, understanding uh, and remembering the route because, as I told you, uh, the firm um, employed uh, as a consulting firm during the actual design of the vessel 15 years ago. So we had just to remember the routings and then we went on board. We sat with the chief engineer for many hours. Uh, he opened his drawings. He opened his uh, marked drawings because every chief engineer has his own way to mark the new cases on board. Uh, and then we went through a walkthrough. He, he guided us towards void spaces, uh, towards machinery rooms. We passed through manholes. Okay, it was a, a very nice and very interesting uh, experience, uh, which unveiled some also some um, discrepancies between the actual case and the drawings. But finally, but finally, we found the routing. We found the routing from the LNG tanks to the main engines, from the bunker station to the LNG tanks. No problem whatsoever. Straightforward solution. We're going to use some void spaces. We are going to use some uh, uh, below routing, no above routing, above, uh, uh, above the floor routing, but below the floor routing. Okay, it's going to be tough, but it's not impossible. It's possible. However, we are still in puzzle of what's going on with the gas 
relief piping route. We do not have a solution yet. And this is why. Here is the so far designed gas relief uh, ventilation pipe uh, identified with the arrow. Uh, just to remind you that the gas relief ventilation is an emergency ventilation route used only in case of emergency when we need to guide the LNG or the MG uh, towards the atmosphere in case of an accident that might happen in the area of the tanks. So this is not going to be used under normal conditions. It's going to be used only in case of emergency. Now comes the tricky point. The IGF states that this area should be away from any accommodation. This is the dome of the pool bar. From any funnel, funnel lines, this is the funnel here. For any radar mask, this is the radar mask somewhere here. And from any openings for ventilation, which we do have some openings here and there. The IGF code does not state the minimum distance. And when we addressed the issue to class, the response from class was that you should keep at least 8 meters in horizontal position and 8 meters in vertical position. I got back to the office with this information, I opened the drawing, and then again I found myself together with the rest of the team puzzled because we simply do not have this uh, safe distance. How come? It comes on the fact that the upper deck of the vessel is uh, fully occupied without either accommodation areas or electronics or funnel areas and I need to go a little bit backwards to show you the profile. Moment. You might say, oh, this is your area. No, unfortunately, this is not my area because this is the heli deck. This is the area for the helicopter landing. So here we have the funnel. We are, here we have accommodation, here we have the pool, here we have accommodation, here we have the mast, here we have arrays of antennas, etc., a very uh, short bow, and the only possible position is to place it here, <coughs> if we are going to place the tanks here. But ventilating from here to there is a huge distance. So we are now facing a pressure drop issue, but unless we find another case here in this area, which is the preferable area, of course we need to go even towards the stern and we need how we are going to boost uh, the, uh, um, the ventilation. Let me find. Um, There we are. So, uh, at the moment, this issue is still under investigation, and for the fifth time, I tell you that this is right now our major concern. Unfortunately, all the tools available did not crack this liability, and we need to find another solution. Uh, just for you to, un to understand what's going on inside a natural um, engine room, uh, some of you might have the picture or might have the experience to walk inside an engine room, some of you not. Uh, you can see photos and scanning from the actual engine room of uh, Festos Palace. This is a photo and you can see some routing here. We are talking about a pipe of this size, not this size. We are talking about a pipe of this size that needs to, to run um, in conjunction with other piping. And here, a more crowded case. This is a scan result of another part of the engine room. And here you can see a, a part 
underneath floor, underneath flooring, flooring of the of the engine room, where this will be used also for uh, bringing the the NG uh, towards the the engine. And this is this is the photo, and this is the scanning result. We're going to use this cloud for um, simulating the path of the piping. So let's go now to what is happening with the class. Class risk assessment and all other interesting points. In order to proceed to the detailed LNG retrofit design, that is the construction drawings of the actual retrofit, we need to consult with the class and we need to obtain the so-called approval in principle. Approval in principle is the first step, the very essential step, but the first step towards the LNG red denotation for the vessel. What does it mean? It means that when the detailed design of the retrofit is ready and before starting the actual retrofitting, we will go again to the class and we will be uh, nominated for LNG ready notation. And after the LNG installation on board and after the inspection of the class, the vessel will receive an LNG ready notation, which is the final uh, quest, let's say, of this design. Uh, the approval in principle includes three distinctive steps. First of all is the record of design screening. I will come to this uh, again. Second is the review of the required drawings, like GA, life saving, fire fighting, ventilation, stability calculations, weight control and analysis, and uh, electronic and electrical installations. And finally, the famous risk assessment report on the proposed LNG retrofit solution. Uh, right now, with the Festos Palace, we have completed the first stage, and we are about to submit the necessary drawings for the second step, and then we will perform the third step together with uh, Lloyds uh, in um, some some day within September or October. Um, what is the record of design screening? A record of design screening. I have included the first page for your convenience. Uh, is a questionnaire uh, that uh, must be filled from class. Uh, in coordination and collaboration with the owner and the designer. Within this questionnaire, all basic questions regarding uh, how, what, and uh, when, and if uh, are answered. And the answers are either yes or no or not applicable. In case, the favor, of course, the favorite. Uh, 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 case is that every answer is answered by yes. In case of no or not applicable, further explanations and further clarifications should be given in order that uh, the surveyor and the class are able to evaluate them and decide if, thus, if those are okay or need to be uh, changed with other uh, approach, other uh, design approach. So this design screening is. Uh, the first step that gives the class uh, the overall picture of the, of the proposed retrofit. This is combined with the review of the drawings just described, and then those two results will be inputs for the risk assessment, which risk assessment is the final step for the approval in principle. In a later stage of design, we will use this approval in principle as a, a cornerstone for evaluating and formulating the final detailed design and then to go to the, to the class notation, to the final class notation. So this is done for Festos Palace. And uh, those are some uh, examples of what we have desi designed. And this is, let's say, the escape plan. Uh, you can see now tanks, three tanks in place. This is the actual engines that are going to be retrofitted, and this is the piping. Uh, let me come back to you a little bit to the B5 line. The B5 line is a line that 
uh, is encasing the inner part of the hull and allows a buffer zone in case of collision or grounding. This means that the B50 line enters somewhere here, so and somewhere here. So everything that is between this B50 line and the opposite symmetrical B50 line is, let's say, in a safe environment. Everything outside the B50 until the hull side is, let's say, exposed to any impact due to grounding or collision. Uh, this is a requirement from damage stability rules and regulations. Okay. So in our design, we have placed every LNG equipment within the B fifth line, which is encasing, let's say like this, the, the installation. This is the escape plan. Uh, this is the firefighting plan that now we are working on. And again, uh, the rest of the plans are in progress. Now, let's go to the feasibility study on the proposed LNG retrofit. The feasibility study will provide the owner, of course, as you may understand, with a clear picture of what will be the economic impact of the LNG retrofit. And uh, based on these results, the owner will be able to decide on a go or not go basis. The feasibility study should be based, of course, on an international accepted method of calculation like NPV and IRR, as Eleni previously described. And of course, the recap period must also be included. So let me link a little bit now what we are going to do with what Eleni previously presented to you. Eleni presented to you a, a, let's say a generic tool for calculating um, pros and cons by, for using LNG compared with other fuels. Uh, this generic tool, of course, uh, is constantly under review. And uh, as you may note, uh, this describes the, the current situation uh, in which strongly that will be different in a couple of years. Why this? Uh, the experience we, fa we faced with scrubbers uh, clearly states that uh, when the actual production of the systems will start globally, then the price will go down. If you remember, uh, anybody of you that is within the business, you will clearly remember that the scrubber installation a couple of years ago was bloody expensive. I really mean bloody expensive. Right now, uh, the case is that uh, scrubber suppliers uh, can provide you with scrubber solutions with a fraction of this cost. We strongly believe the same will happen with the LNG. When the LNG installations will start all over the, the industry, the price will go down. And then, of course, the LNG will be most attractive for installation. So, what are any uh, uh, previously described to you is a generic tool that needs to constantly be updated. The role here as a technical designer is to give the actual inputs to Eleni to update accordingly her tool in order to give an accurate picture of the LNG. If you remember, Eleni stated that she is using some inputs regarding engine use, engine uh, uh, power, engine consumption, etc. Those are rules and figures provided by the engine manufacturer as a general data. However, I'm going to give here actual data because I have an actual model, an actual ship, a actual profile, actual operating hours, actual consumption for the specific engine by the manufacturer, so I can accurately, I can calculate in more accurate way the, the consumption and then I can provide a Lenny a natural and correct input for her model. And th by doing this you will see results that will make LNG far more attractive to, to, to the ship owner. And we strongly believe that this will uh, be the case within 
the next uh, three or four years because LNG will start to be implemented in, um, in, in, on, on board. Uh, so, uh, based on the actual figures and uh, provided that LNG will work on them, then the owner will have uh, LNG's result and then he will decide to go or not go based. Uh, what I'm giving actually to Eleni as inputs, as actual inputs for her to work on, uh, are the cost uh, inputs, which are the following. It's exactly this one. The main engine retrofit kit, the LNG storage tanks complete with cold box and safety devices, the bunker space, the automated system control, the nitrogen system, the LNG piping works, the steel works, the firefighting and evacuation system upgrades, the emergency shutdown systems, the engineering, including risk assessment, class testing and commissioning, ships electrical and electronic systems upgrading and new ventilation, training, and any costs for after sales and warranties. All these costs are going to be actual figures, not estimated or calculated. Actual figures from any uh, system provider and the engine manufacturer as well. So these actual figures will be used by Eleni to update her, pro, uh, update her results and then these correct results will be then presented to the owner for the final uh, decision. We are very optimistic, we are working on that with Eleni and Eleni of course did not show to you the case of Festos Palace which allow me to say that it's not for demonstration yet, uh, it's a restricted information but uh, I can tell you we are working on them and uh, the picture will be quite different on of what you have seen from the generic model of the LNG calculator. So expanding the design spiral, optimizing the solution, the final chapter and I'm finishing because I understand uh, you are getting a little bit tired now. You all know the design spiral uh, applied to the naval architecture and marine engineering. Of course, we are not talking for every item. Uh, not every item is required to be covered by the LNG retrofit. Uh, the idea behind this presentation is that we are following the same uh, pattern. We are following the spiral. We are starting from uh, emission requirement and then we are going back and back and back again, closing as much as possible our target which is the detailed design phase, the, the Xi'an circle in the middle. So, uh, in order to go from the starting point, which is, if you remember, the tank capacity, uh, to the detailed design, we need to understand that we are using an existing ship. This means we cannot destroy the ship. We cannot, let's say, for example, change the shape of the hull of the ship. This is impossible. We need to accommodate our design towards an existing situation. Uh, we are not uh, shaping the ship. The ship shapes the solution for us. So the designers will always bear in mind that the retrofit should be kept within the certain limits, like minimum disruption of the vessel for installation purposes. Uh, you, we should always avoid as a first solution any piping within accommodation areas. Uh, we must uh, produce a design which is ergonomic and operational friendly. For example, it's of no use if you design a bunker station uh, for which in order the crew to go to it must pass through 40 waves, as we say here in Greece. You need to design a friendly case. You need to design a solution that the crew that will operate the vessel will be able to operate it easily, first of all, and safety, under safety, which is most important. So, uh, of course, the whole retrofit should be in line with the IGF code and all other relevant rules and regulations. Uh, the designer must always keep one eye on the production. This means that one eye will be concentrated on the design itself and the other eye should be around the world, around the system suppliers, constantly consulting them, constantly asking them questions, 
constantly being informed about new products and new ideas. Because as you can imagine, you can easily imagine if you design something that it's, it is either out of production anymore or in case to be productive, it needs, let's say, one and a half years, it's useless. Your design is useless. You need to balance between your theoretical approach and your practical approach. You always need to be in both sectors simultaneously. This is a difficult case, but please do not forget this is the case of an engineer. This is the task of an engineer. An engineer is the guy who must uh, very fast uh, comply and accommodate many inputs. So, uh, the economic impact of the retrofit, last but by no means least, this is the money case, should be kept within the limits that were presented to the owner through the feasibility study. Uh, you should bear in mind that you will face difficulties if you have calculated, for example, a retrofit cost of uh, 100 euro and then suddenly you will go to the owner stating, oh, sorry, we, it seems that the retrofit will cost 500 euros. This will be a very difficult situation for you. So please always check the numbers. Always go back to the numbers and always follow the numbers. This is another task of the uh, right project manager to, to do the with. So, the summary. What is the lesson so far from Festos Palace? Uh, the basics, we have a cruise ferry. Uh, this is a very good example because it's a relative modern vessel. Uh, can demonstrate a good recap period. The vessel is closing, not reached the mid-age yet. It's closing here mid-age. Uh, she's a big vessel. Uh, this means that uh, she can offer us a lot of spaces for alternatives. Uh, for consideration. Uh, she displays an excellent record of safe operation all these years and this is important because you know the final product must also present a very good public image and Festos Palace is one of the vessels in Greece that truly uh, provides a very good public image um, in the, uh, on, the, on her role. Uh, and this is the next point that from marketing point of view do not underestimate marketing uh, from a marketing point of view, she displays an excellent public image for becoming an environmental friendly ship. Uh, and uh, always remember that when you are dealing with passenger vessels, uh, um, the public image of this vessel is important to be recorded. It is important for you to know that you are dealing with a passenger vessel that has a very good public image. Otherwise, whatever you are going to do on that, it will not affect in a positive way the public image. So, uh, the design so far is uh, smooth. We do not uh, face, we didn't face, and we do not expect to face any show stoppers, apart from the gas relief piping, which remains, I can tell you, this is, remains a uh, headache. So, uh, Continues with the lessons. What we did, we started the design without an established IGF code. This is known to everybody that the IGF code has not been officially uh, declared as an official documentation of the of SOLAS and the IMO. And we are using now the draft uh, versions. Every time that a new draft version is coming um, on board, we are using it. Uh, initially, we faced some hiccups, uh, but uh, now we are okay. Uh, and as an example, I wrote here that uh, the design was blocked by the requirement of the then draft version of the IGF code to keep a limit of the maximum length of the LNG tank, which was um, formulated based on the length of the ship, as a percentage of the length of the ship. Now this is out. So uh, we are free to select any length that, accom that accommodate our needs. Uh, of course, again, the technical documentation is strongly needed, but uh, with that, we do have all the literature for review. We had on board uh, visits uh, and a very good cooperation with the crew. Uh, the class has been already involved. 
and uh, this should be keep in mind that you should involve class as early as possible and uh, this is for your own uh, sake because it will permit you to proceed smoothly with your design evolution and uh, knowing their remarks and implementing them as uh, early as possible and uh, now this is my personal approach on this that uh, depending on uh, class and uh, on uh, their uh, way of uh, operating the designer might face delays might face foggy answers or foggy solutions and this is now your task as designer to be able to do class surveyors and trying to extract from them a more clear picture. Uh, it's also a, a business of uh, knowing each other, it's a business of, a business of understanding each other and um, to not underestimate the public relations in this case. Uh, so, last is that the fact that the owner should be fully aware in every step of the design you should not isolate the owner from the design. You should keep him, keep him informed in every um, evolution of the design and brief him of what is ahead. Uh, if you pound there, let's say, the owner in this way, he will feel very confident to your work and uh, he will collaborate with you uh, in every point. And this will free uh, your design as well. What are the challenges ahead of us from, for, the, for the Festos Palace? For the Festos Palace, the challenges have already more or less been described. To find the proper route for the gas relief of piping. To obtain the approval in principle from class. To remain within the, within the financial results of the feasibility study. To, have, to continue to have, because we already have, to continue to have a satisfied owner with the results of this LNG right of the design to continue to the next level of design, which is the detailed design, of course, and uh, we need to conclude by supporting a proper actual installation. And the actual installation will finally deliver final product, which is going to be the green flagship of Minoan Lines, the new Festos Palace with the LNG. So this is the end. And Festos Palace, thank you very well, very much for your attention. I thank you as well. And uh, I can be now at your disposal for any questions in case you have any. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we'll see now if uh, there are uh, any questions. We have a few questions. Can you ask them? Yes. Uh, the first one uh, is about uh, if it was a major or minor conver uh, conversion. conversion. If it's considered a major or a minor conversion. Uh, the first one is about if it is considered major or minor conversion. So. Conversion? Uh, because as I, as I explained to you, uh, we're talking about uh, dismantling uh, two huge engines and then rebuild the them. Uh, we're talking about uh, uh, reshaping uh, internal decks. Uh, we are talking about uh, routing all ventilation through side cells and uh, all this. Uh, and based on the capacity that it is needed, we're talking about uh, large LNG tanks. Uh, the engines are by default huge engines. So we're talking about a major retrofit. Okay, Hello? Uh, the question was about the classification point of view. From the classification point of view, whether this is a minor or a major. So if it's a major, they have to uh, comply with the latest regulations. They have to change to the SOLAS 2009. Of course, the SIPA also complies. 
the ship already complies with the latest SOLAS because all these years, uh, if, if I understood the question correctly, because I, I have some gaps in the, in, in the receiving the sound, but if I understood the question correctly, uh, the ship complies right now with the latest SOLAS uh, regulations and the ship will continue to comply with. But I don't know if this was to your question. This was your question or not? Yeah, this, this was a question. Uh, there is another one uh, about uh, the approval in principle. Uh, if the approval uh, in principle is uh, something that uh, LR has. Now, because they used to appraise the drawings, not have approval in principle. Is this a new uh, status? We started, we started the process for obtaining the approval in principle. And this process, as I explained, has three distinctive steps. The first step is the risk assessment, uh, is the questionnaire. The second step is the uh, submission of the drawing unique as a concept design. And the third step is the risk assessment. If all these three uh, comply with the, uh, with the rules and regulations of the IGF code and the low LR class, then the, uh, the LR will, um, uh, will furnish a, an approval in principle. This is not a notation. This must be clarified. This is not a notation. This is just an, <coughs> a, certify, a certification that the a concept LNC retrofit design is on the right track and eventually can lead to a, a detailed design that will receive the final class notation which is LNG ready. So this is the first step in the process of uh, notation and uh, in order we are we started already with Lloyds and uh, we fi finalized the first step and we are on the second step and in October we will go to the third step that is the risk assessment. Can you answer a little okay. more? Uh, we you can we like just a... have uh, another answer. So uh, another question. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, basically is the point of the uh, classification bureau, this is a uh, categorized into the major conversion because uh, this is the involve the uh, the carrying capacity of the ship. So as you uh, told, the in mapper and the solar we should meet the various regulations. And uh, uh, why the classification is unable to approve this uh, drawing is the uh, this is developed uh, based on the IGF code, but this is not yet re rectified. So until this is rectified and coming to first, uh, the classification is uh, can cannot approve the drawing. That is very good. Um, and also, can I ask some questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I missed the question. Uh, I I have big gaps in sound, so uh, I didn't hear almost. Can you repeat? Please try to do to, to ask again. Yes, question. Question. Yes. Uh, uh, could you could you uh, explain the how to uh, design the bunkering system based on the fuel consumption and uh, the uh, uh, the receiving rate? So you you told us the uh, the one time as every one week they're supposed to. Uh, the operation of the the bunkering takes place, isn't it? Okay, uh, uh, let me repeat. You are asking uh, how to design the bunkering station. Is that correct? Sorry, guys, I have I have serious problem with the sound. Yeah, this is logical. I'm trying to uh, to get on and not again the microphones in order not to have both uh, open. So to try to have some uh, gaps of uh, time in order to have a, a good conversation, a good quality in our conversation. So uh, is it okay? I can now hear you a little bit better. 
Can you please repeat the question? Regarding the uh, case vessel, uh, when you design bunkering system, how did you uh, design the capacity of bunkering rate uh, based on the fuel consumption? My apologies, I, I really cannot, cannot hear you. I cannot hear you at all. Sorry. Leonidas, is there any way to, to, to uh, either to write the question or to... Yeah, yeah, we will, we will type the question. We will type the question. Okay. You, you need to know the fuel consumption of the ship? Is that, is that the question? You need to know the, time, the fuel consumption and the, bunker, the time that it uh, needs to be bunkered, correct? Okay. Uh, for the first uh, part of your question, the, the um, fuel consumption, I reject to inform that I cannot uh, disclose this information. Uh, because uh, this comes from Vatsula, and uh, Vatsula has not authorized us to share this information uh, outside of our office. Uh, from the second point, uh, regarding the bunkering, more or less, uh, the bunkering uh, rate will be the one that you observe in the uh, vital race. Uh, the duration, of course, will be longer, much longer, uh, and it will last for many hours. But uh, the actual consumption, unfortunately, I cannot give this to you because it's, um, uh, let's say, and information that comes from Vatsula and uh, at the moment is uh, restricted. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is no problem. Uh, if there is any other question any other from the questions? audience. Yeah. No. No. Thank you very much. Yeah, I no don't much. know the, the others have any questions. Thank you very much from Sahel yeah, University. Yeah, they have some questions there. The next season uh, will be tomorrow at nine o'clock from uh, Stratford University uh, about tanks, LNG tanks. So we will have uh, the next connection at uh, 9 o'clock UK time tomorrow morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Leonidas, is that okay? Can we disconnect now? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, okay. Of course. okay. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.